Previously on Drake Paragon. There's no choice. We're ever going to have the idea whether we do have icebergs directly in our path. We're actually thinking about leaving anyway. This is seven days out from today. I don't think it's ideal. It's not like therapy. You can wait a little bit and then try to go down a little bit and then. <laughs> we shouldn't have any problem getting out of here in the morning. Just back it up. I just really hope we don't get hit by a storm, a bad storm. So it's 12 UTC, that's 10 o'clock local, that's right now. We've got this area here of at least 30 to 35. That includes the current location. Less than 100 nautical miles out, there's some 35 to 40 going in the right direction. Step through to tomorrow. Things have calmed down a little bit. Starting here, if we were to leave at exactly 10 and start sailing our 100 nautical miles to the first waypoint, then we would go through this beam. 25 knots window to the southwest. Tomorrow we'd be there, but the day after we'd be there in 30 knots of wind. Sort of right in the center of the thing. If we left tomorrow morning, then we'd be leaving something less windy. But if we leave tomorrow, then we'd be here. Going forward another 24 hours to Thursday, 12 UTC. Case for going further south than east and getting past that stuff. This morning rather than tomorrow. Because then we're getting the extra day south. Which I think if we left tomorrow we're just gonna be in the stuff anyway. I'm scared to hell I'm moving the boat off the dock in this wind. I don't wanna like get rocks or that iceberg. Let's go inside and look at it. Well, we just looked at it out here, and there's no way I want to leave in this. The weather forecast is for a little less wind here tomorrow morning, and I don't want to exit Prince Christian Sound and go through the iceberg field in strong wind. I'd rather do it in less wind. You know, if, if we're going to when if we're going to be in really strong wind, I want to be out to sea and far, far away from rocks and icebergs. So that's what we just decided out here. And now we're going to talk about how we're going to get the boat off the dock. Wow. Yeah, I know it's getting worse. It's getting much worse. We may think about doubling up on some lines. A real chafe point right there. It's already got some chafe on it. Got another line there. This is second safety. Got some chafe on the chain there. Uh, and 
and as you can see we've got white caps after a couple of hours of looking at weather and looking at the route on the weather map we've decided not to go today primarily because of these current conditions here we don't want to go through the rest of Prince Christian Sound and through the iceberg field and off the coast of Greenland in 25 to 30 knots of wind. We'd rather wait till tomorrow when it dies down a little bit. The problem that may create for us further down the line is that it gets us into some stronger wind three days out. If I had to choose between strong wind right by the coast or strong wind offshore, I'll take it offshore rather than near rocks and icebergs. I think we need to turn the boat around somehow, but we got like a 10 foot tidal range and that gigantic rock and that gigantic rock, they're both like two feet above the water at low tide. So that restricts our movement coming out of here. We can't go over there. And we have those rocks over there. And as of this morning, we have that iceberg right there. He's really large. He's grounded. And I uh, don't know what's going to happen with him throughout the day, but I hope he doesn't come in and hit us. Last night, I was in bed in the aft cabin, and Aina was sleeping in the salon, and we heard a big bang on the hall. We both got up, and we used the boat poles to fend a fairly large piece of ice that was hitting the rudder right there. So that's always fun to wake up to. Uh, so what is your idea? Okay, the idea was maybe not for this wind, uh, but just to get us... If we... I mean, if reversing, we reverse to starboard, I'd say... I don't think we can count on, on any directional control okay. of any kind in reverse. Okay, because I would be thinking that if we were going in reverse, because the wind is this way, yeah. if you pull the throttle backwards, what'll happen is the back's gonna come out, gonna come out. Maybe the back drifts this way. Yeah. And then we're stuck on the dock. Yeah. If we kept a line, like a stern line on, and then put forward on, so pretty much you're putting tension on and it's squeezing the back in and then push the nose out. So, so you say get the boat back into the position it was in when we first came in, when we first landed here. Yeah. Up against this dock with the rudder right about there. Yeah. So if the stern is here, then the bow is going to be like a few feet forward of the edge here. God, that doesn't look very good, does it, the way she's bouncing? If we did that, and we tied the stern off or, you know, put a line on the stern somewhere and I use the engine to, to hard throttle the port. If, and we had the line on the stern holding it there, I don't know if I could get the nose to go out there without hitting that rock. I think we need to turn the boat around somehow. One last thought is maybe if we could have a line on the stern this full throttle motor out with the line on the stern preventing us from from hitting that rock then I could turn to starboard and let her port side come up along here and put the bow here then we could back up and go forward and turn and go out got another idea you will be something that rock. I want you to stop me from hitting that rock as I go in reverse. Yeah. And then I'm going to go in forward and uh, turn hard to starboard and bring the port side of the boat alongside the dock here. And so, that line would be on the starboard bow. Maybe we should draw pictures on paper. I think pictures, I love doing that. I love Do pictures. That. I love pictures on paper. <laughs> what was that? Nothing. <laughs> See, this is our situation and it looks wonderful. You just want to draw. I did. I like. I mean, this is what I had to do all the time. Awesome. The purple is the dock. Oh, actually, wait a second. This is just not quite complete. There's a red container that just sits right here. <laughs> and there's a little crane as well there. Okay. So, essentially, our situation is as such. We have, wait, let me just see, does this work? 
this is jolly good this one. Okay, so we are currently uh, on a dock here. The weather station is up here, up some giant set of steps. Weather station. Okay, we are here. This is Paragon. Okay. So the situation we find ourselves in is that we've got a lot of chop and a lot of waves. We've got these waves coming in like this against the dock. So we have a little bit of shelter in behind here, but there's some rocks here. So what we have to try and do is get Paragon out, uh, out of this dock, uh, <laughs> avoid the iceberg, avoid the rocks, avoid this rock, and possibly some small rocks in along this line here. Um, so one of the options was today to bring Paragon uh, so that we have it facing the other way, so that the, the, the bow is facing out, so tomorrow morning we can just motor straight out this way. Because this is Prince Christian Sand out here, and that's where we want to go. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Hopefully that guy doesn't thaw out and break up and then come in and join the party. Well, hopefully if the wind stays at that, if he does break up, he'll go that way. <laughs> But you were thinking of me holding onto a line here. Yeah? So you reversing out to here. Yeah. Then what do you do with the line? That's a good question. Yeah, no, neither of those things looks very doable, does it? It's an interesting idea if we push the boat aft and then swing it around and tighten up on the lines until yeah. we're secured here. Yeah then having a spring line preventing us from going more aft and having the rudder hit that rock, then would I be able to just let the bow go out like this and then motor out? I'm wondering. I'm gonna go to look outside again. It appears to be at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, both today, now, and tomorrow. And there's another one, like, in the middle of the night, at like 10 o'clock at night. See what happened in the cap rail? Cool. Oh, something that's taken out there. Yeah. Really could use a tender board. So what's happening now? I'm trying to figure out how to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> uh, well, I'm wondering if we should be trying to take advantage of the high tide situation at this very moment to reorient the boat or even leave and anchor somewhere else so that we can get a fresh start tomorrow morning as soon as daylight happens. I'm worried that if we don't do something now, then tomorrow morning uh, it's just going to take us additional time to get it figured out and get us out of here and get us underway and that yeah. will take away from our daylight going through the iceberg field. Yeah. right across from here, isn't there? Not that we tested it or anything, but... It's over there. It's the far side of the harbor. Sure wish this wind would die down just a little bit more. Sure would make it easier for us to get out of here. The wind's just gonna wreak havoc on the uh, ability to steer. I think a lot of people might think, what's the problem? But they don't know this boat. She weighs 40,000 pounds. She's just so much weight to push around with the engine. It takes much, much longer to do anything. And uh, that makes getting out of a situation like this even trickier. If it was a J24, it'd be no problem, you know, but... What is nice a little bit about that iceberg is that it's given a little bit of protection <laughs> from the waves. Yeah. The only thing is, is if that starts getting any closer, I think we need to get out of here and maybe go to the anchorage. That one. Out there. That one. 
because there's more common business like turn the boat around so that we can make an emergency exit you know without without yeah let's turn the engine okay so we just discovered that the oil is now the engine is now leaking oil I just checked the oil level which I typically do before starting it and uh, the oil level was down and the oil pan is uh, got maybe three to four to six cups of used engine oil in the pan underneath the engine. I'm not sure where the oil is leaking from. I'm glad that we have a lot of extra oil on the boat. I don't think it's a worst case scenario kind of thing. It's just leaking oil. You can pop it off as it leaks. How's the iceberg doing? It looks like it moves closer to us. I'll start the engine now. Feels like the wind may be decreasing a little bit more. That anchorage is over there, one and a half nautical miles away. If we were to go out from here and over to that anchorage, and if it didn't work out and, and we wanted to try to make it back into here, it's another possible scenario in my Okay, just hit 30 knots. 30 knots of wind? 30 knots of wind on the uh, on the wind speed. That sucks. Bad time quit smokes. <laughs> deep breaths, man, deep breaths. That's what I'm trying. See if you're working for me. <laughs> We started the engine around the dock above the station and we're, uh, we're in between 15 to 30 knots of wind here. We get a lot of waves because we're on the on the the lee side of the uh, of the harbour. It's fluctuating between 15 and 30 knots. Jake's found that the oil pressure has dropped in the engine and that the, the engine is leaking oil. And to add to that, we also have an iceberg of wind that was like a big iceberg. It's kind of not good. We still have plenty of options, so we have time, we're all safe. That's fine. But it's just that the icebergs are moving and we think we need to get out of here. But the wind is making it very difficult to get off the dock.